Welcome to this short act of worship from the Link Charge of St Andrews, Hope Park and Martyrs with Strathkinnis. Whether you're listening online or joining in by telephone, you are most welcome. Our worship will include a hymn played by David Fisher and sung by Connor Going, hymn 484, a reading by Ian Brown, a reflection, a prayer and after the benediction some music played by Callum MacLeod. I invite you to remember the lit candle that sits on the communion table, a sign that Christ is the light of the world and that light never falters, never fades. The psalmist says, The Lord is good to all and his compassion is over all that he has made. Let's worship God together. Hymn 484, Great God, your love has called us here. Him 484. I encourage you to join in at home. Great God, your love has called us here as we Systems close confined, yet seeking hope for humankind. Lord God, in Christ you call our name, and then receive us as your own, not through some merit, right, or claim, but by your gracious love alone. We strain to glimpse your mercy seat and find you kneeling at our feet. Then take the towel and break the bread and humble us and call us friends. Suffer and serve till all are fed and show how grandly love intends to work till all creation sings to fill all worlds to crown all things. Lord God, in Christ you set us free, your life to live, your joy to share. Give us your Spirit's liberty to turn from guilt and dull despair, and offer all that faith can do while love is making all things new. The reading is from Mark's Gospel, picking up from where we left off last week. So Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, and reading from verses 21 to 28. That's Mark, chapter 1, from verse 21 to verse 28. Let us listen for a word from God. They came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath he went to the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, 
for, unlike the scribes, he taught with a note of authority. Now there was a man in their synagogue possessed by an unclean spirit. He shrieked at him, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him. Be silent, he said, and come out of him. The unclean spirit threw the man into convulsions and with a loud cry left him. They were all amazed and began to ask one another, What is this? A new kind of teaching. He speaks with authority. When he gives orders, even the unclean spirits obey. His fame soon spread far and wide throughout Galilee. Thanks be to God. Amen. Have any of you ever gone to stay as a guest at Iona Abbey? It's a long time since I've visited, but the Iona community has a routine. Besides the worship in the morning each day, in Iona Abbey Church there is worship each evening too. And that worship takes a different theme for each evening in the week. The first evening is a service of welcome. On the Sunday evening, a service with time for quiet reflection. On the evening before guests leave, usually a communion service. On my last visit, on the final evening, there was a power cut. So not only did we celebrate communion around a table running up and down the length of the abbey, but we did so in candlelight, as monks may have done centuries before. But on the same night each week, uh, might be a Tuesday, there is always a service of healing. This too has always been one of the concerns of the Iona community since its founding days and it's one of the aspects of its work that I at times have struggled with. My first degree was a science degree and an appreciation of the scientific method is important to me. If you're unwell you go to the doctor and the doctor using scientifically tested methods will prescribe what he or she thinks you need to help do what they can to make you better, hopefully fully better. Most of us would take similar first steps if something to do with our health was wrong with us. And even now with COVID-19 and lockdown, we are still encouraged to contact the health service if we do need help. And yet I don't doubt that true health and healing and wholeness are comprised of things more profound and deep than can be addressed by medicine alone. And I don't doubt that God is intimately involved in all of life. Before the healing service in the Abbey, there is a workshop which helps people to think about and focus on healing and learn more about the understanding of the Iona community. Any notion that it is only about people with severe disabilities coming forward and expecting miraculous cures is dispelled. At the service, the same format each week is followed. And to be clear, I'm referring to how it was conducted in pre-COVID-19 days when social distancing was unnecessary, unlike today. So, at the service, people who wish to in the calm and gentle environment of the Abbey in the evening, were invited forward to kneel or stand at a cushion. Not only if they wish to seek prayer for themselves, but for someone known to them or a situation in the world. Anyone in the congregation who wished could join those laying on hands or remain in their seat, and if they chose, they could join in the prayer that was said as hands were laid on each person. The prayer was, Spirit of the living God, present with us now, enter you, body, mind and spirit, and heal you of all that harms you. In Jesus' name, Amen. This continued until everyone who wished had had hands laid on them and the prayer said for them, and the service names were also read out of people who had asked to be remembered. If there are many names, that can take some time. In the Gospel today, Jesus teaches with authority and casts out an unclean spirit. Possession by unclean spirits made persons ritually unclean. 
They could not go to the temple or participate in religious festivals. They were separated from God, family and neighbours. The state of being ritually unclean for the most part was a temporary matter. People became unclean temporarily so that food could be prepared, the sick could be tended, babies could be born and the dead could be prepared for burial. After a prescribed length of time or cleansing ritual, a person was rendered clean again. There is a significant distinction, however, between temporary uncleanness and long-lasting dissociation from community, such as the person in today's reading experienced. In healing this person, a surprising reversal takes place. Jesus reshapes and restores community and relationship with God. Significant and transforming change. Casting out demons is problematic for people today because our understanding of how the universe works is very different from the people of Mark's day. There is a long history of interpretation of Jesus' healings and exorcisms. One interpretation is that unclean spirits or demons represent the evils that assail us and prevent us from living an abundant life. Demons could be such things as depression, anxiety, fear and so on. John Wesley even identified demons as social evils such as slavery. What, I wonder, are the social evils of our day, which we are, if you like, called to cast out? Destitution, despair, loneliness, the selfishness of a consumer society, homelessness, of course, right now in Tier 4, and necessarily, how we can respond has limits placed on it. Think how significant, though, what a transforming change it would be for a homeless person to be found a house to turn into a home, or someone who is lonely to be given a regular phone call, certainly something that Tier 4 restrictions doesn't prevent. Not the same as an in-person visit, but contact nonetheless. I'm sure it doesn't take each of us long to think of other examples. In this reading, Jesus uses his authority that people recognise to banish that which causes distress, to bring about lasting, significant, transforming change. Healing. It's a theme for his ministry and, of course, for Christian service. This week, I'm glad to have chatted to a number of people in the congregation who have either received their vaccination or received a date to receive it. Science being applied to lead, we hope, towards transforming change and settled spirits to a peacefulness that will allow aspects of life which have lain dormant for some time to start at some time to flourish once more. Amen. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we give thanks that the hard work of scientists has brought such quick advances that now more and more people are receiving vaccinations. As the United Kingdom passed the milestone of 100,000 deaths from COVID-19 last week, we remember all those who are bereaved and who mourn the loss of loved ones and those who have COVID-19, whether they are at home or in hospital. We pray for those who suffer from any mental health issues and again offer thanks for the dedication of scientists and healthcare professionals working to ease distress and torment. We are aware of the growing evidence that mental health issues are increasing during this period of lockdown and pray for those affected in any way that they will be able to reach out and talk and that they will find a helpful ear or effective medication. We pray for those who are struggling to make ends meet during this time of furlough and lockdown, for those who are concerned about meeting their rent or putting food on the table, and we pray for the work of those offering debt advice and for storehouse and other food banks as they strive to supply urgent need. In silence, 
we take time to remember those known to us who are ill, sad, lonely, bereaved. May they sense your love and care. Bring healing. Bring peace to them, we pray. Lord, hear these and all our prayers, including the words our Saviour taught us to say together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This week there will be a Zoom social on Wednesday the 3rd of February at 7 o'clock, an eco-congregation theme with a chance to think about storms and weather patterns. A reminder for elders that there will be a Kirk Session meeting via Zoom at 7 o'clock this Thursday, the 4th of February. Please take care and stay safe. The benediction. Christ spoke with authority, turning turmoil to settledness. Christ speaks still. Go in peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you all, now and evermore. Amen.